Welcome once again to our discussion on principles of economics and we are discussing about market structure. If you recall in our previous session we were talking about monopoly market structure wherein there is only one seller. So we discussed about the monopolist behavior in terms of setting equilibrium price, output and what should be the monopolist profit, what are the reasons behind monopoly market, so on and so forth. So that means we have so far discussed two extreme market structure. At the one hand, we discussed about perfectly competitive market wherein there are n number of buyers and sellers. So that means large number of, very large number of buyers and sellers and as a result of which no single buyer or seller has any market power. So no buyer can influence the market outcome, no seller can also influence the market outcome. On the other hand, we discussed about monopoly market structure at the other extreme. Since there is only one seller in monopoly market, the monopolist has the market power. When we talk about pure monopoly, that means there is only one seller and the market power is the highest and as a result of which monopolist can actually influence the market outcome. And we said that monopoly is basically an imperfectly competitive market. But in reality, even if there are few number of sellers, then also we say that sellers will have some kind of monopoly power even though that is not the case of a pure monopoly. So after discussing the two extremes, perfect competition, monopoly, then there are two other important market structures in reality, wherein the number of sellers are not as low as monopoly and not as large as competitive market. And these two market structures are actually the most prevalent market structure in reality. That is why in today's discussion, we will be discussing one such market structure which is called monopolistically competitive market, which lies in between monopoly and competition. Now as the name suggests that monopolistically competitive, that means this type of market has characteristics of both monopoly as well as competition. That is why the name monopolistically competitive. So we will discuss about the pricing strategy of the monopolistically competitive market and then we will discuss the examples of such kind of market structure and then we will also discuss about in which way this market resembles with competition and in which market the, in which aspects this market is actually uh, similar to monopoly. With this, let us start our discussion today, which is on monopolistically competitive market, which lies in between monopoly and competition. So two extremes we have discussed, perfect competition, many forms and identical products. If you recall, this is very important. So all the sellers in a perfectly competitive market, they were selling identical products and that is why no seller has any market out, uh, power. Then in monopoly, there is only one form. Please keep in mind, this is pure monopoly we are talking about, but economists, they call other markets also where there are few number of sellers. We say that those sellers will also have some kind of monopoly power. Here it is pure monopoly when there is only one form. And in between these two extremes, we have imperfectly competitive market. First one is oligopoly and second one is monopolistically competitive market. There is a single way by which actually you can differentiate between monopolistically competition monopolistic competition and oligopoly. In monopolistic competition, you have a large number of small firms. So that means each firm's market share is small. Oligopoly is just the opposite. You have 
few number of large firms. So that means market share of each firm is significantly higher than monopolistically competitive market. So large number of small firms then you will get monopolistically competitive market, small number of large firms you will get oligopoly. Okay? This is the easiest way to differentiate these two types of market which are called imperfectly competitive market. Then what are the char characteristics of this monopolistically competitive market? As I said there are many sellers but please remember these many does not mean as many as competition. Then product differentiation. So that means goods are not similar but not identical like competition. So as a result of which each seller has an incentive to differentiate these products. Now let us talk about some examples of monopolistically competitive market. You can think about let us say toothpaste market. You have lot of varieties of toothpaste. They are more or less same but not exactly same. Toothpaste you can take cookies, you can take uh, shampoos, you can take uh, let us say night clubs. Okay? So these are examples of similar products but not identical. As a result of which the sellers they have to differentiate each products. Okay? And how do you differentiate? by advertising. We will talk about advertising, what is the role of advertisement in a later part of our discussion. So product differentiation is an important feature of monopolistically competitive market since goods are apparently similar but they are not exactly the same. Then this free entry and exit, here also amount of investment is smaller. So you can freely enter and freely exit. but this free is not as free as competition. So please keep in mind, there is a little bit of friction in the entry and exit because amount of investment is higher than competition. Then these are the examples, apartments. There are so many builders in the real estates and there are so many apartments and almost all the apartments are similar. And that is why each real estate company has to spend a lot to differentiate their project with the another. Somebody will say that this is a, our project is very near to the metro station. Someone will say that this is the three sided uh, 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 air circulation. Somebody will say that we have hundreds of amenities. Somebody will say that you do not have to pay EMI till the time of uh, position, so on and so forth. So there are many ways by which you have to differentiate. Then books, particularly novels, bottled water, clothing, fast food, nightclubs, these are so many examples of monopolistically competitive market. Then as I said that this market has a similarity with competition as well as monopoly, let us now see in which way they are similar. So both the cases, number of sellers are many but in monopolistically competitive market, this many is not as many as competition. Free entry and exit, yes. Long run economic profit in both the cases. Economic profit in both the cases is zero. Okay? And the products, what is sold in perfect competition, they are identical and here it is differentiate. So identical means exactly same, right? And form in the competition has no market power, that means it is called price taker. Whatever price is decided in the market using the market demand and supply, if you recall, a single firm in perfectly competitive market will take that price as given and then sells as much as the particular firm wants. But in monopolistically competitive market, firm has market power. But please remember, this market power is not 
as large as monopoly. Then the demand curve in perfectly competitive market it is horizontal as, as you know, but in a monopolistically competitive market the firm is facing a downward sloping demand curve like the monopolist. Okay. But in we, one way this demand in monopolistically competitive market is different than monopoly even though both are downward sloping and that you can differentiate with the elasticity of demand. See in pure monopoly there is no substitutes. So, obviously, if there is no substitutes, elasticity of demand is much less as a result of which the demand in a monopoly market is very steep. On the other hand, in monopolistically competitive market, demand is downward sloping, but since there are availability of substitutes, the elasticity of demand in monopolistically competitive market is larger than monopoly. So, demand curve is downward sloping, but little flatter than what the monopolist experience. And here it is, diff it is the comparison between monopoly and monopolistically competitive market. Number of sellers 1, here it is many, free entry and exit is not there in monopoly, but here it is there. Long run profit in monopoly is 0, here it is, sorry, in monopoly it is positive, if you recall, but here it is 0. Form has market power, yes, in both the cases, but monopolist market power is much larger than monopolistic competition. Both are downward sloping, but here in monopoly, keep in mind that form demand curve and market demand curve both are same, but here it is we are talking about the forms demand curve which is downward sloping and market demand to any way is always downward sloping. Close substitutes in case of monopoly nothing is there, but in monopolistic competition we have many close substitutes. Now, we will compare the monopolistically competitive firms earning profit in the short run or not. So, that means we are talking about the pricing decision or equilibrium condition of a monopolistically competitive market in the short run. So, this is the demand curve as I said it is downward sloping and as you know we have discussed in the context of monopoly when the demand is downward sloping what should be the slope of the MR curve? that should be twice steeper than the demand curve, okay, that we have already proved. So, this is the MR curve, okay. And at each quantity, you can see the price would be higher than MR because price is determined from the demand curve, okay. And this is we are introducing uh, average total cost and marginal cost curve. As you know that marginal cost, it intersects the average total cost from its from the down and intersects at its minimum point, right. So, now equilibrium in any type of market as you all know that it is determined by the intersection of MR and MC. So, this is the simple rule applicable please remember for each and every type of market okay so a rational individual will always equate marginal revenue with marginal cost to determine the equilibrium level of quantity so that means here this equating marginal revenue and marginal cost you will get the quantity but price will be determined from the demand curve that you have to remember look at this so this is quantity but price, if you extend this line up to demand card, then you will get the price. So, that is why this is the price and this is quantity. Okay. And how do you determine the profit? As you know, that profit per unit is the difference between, can you think of how do you determine profit? In the market structure where you have market power, 
if you recall we have discussed this is the difference between price and average total cost. P minus ATC is the price per unit of output. If you multiply that with total amount of output, you will get total profit very simple. So, that is exactly is happening. Look, this area is nothing but P minus ATC multiplied by Q. That is the profit that a monopolistically competitive firm earns in the short run. But this profit will result in new firm to enter because we maintain that assumption that entry is free. So, that means in the long run more firms will enter into the market seeing that the existing firms they earn positive profit. It can be loss also a monopolistically competitive firm may incur losses when the ATC is lying above the demand curve right. So, that means look at here your price is lower than actually the ATC. So, obviously the firm will incur loss, but the loss amount also is determined by ATC minus P in multiplied by total amount of output right. This is the loss. So, if there is a loss then what will happen? some firms will leave the market ok. Some firms will leave the market since exit is also free right. Now, we will compare monopolistically competitive markets equilibrium and monopoly in the short run. So, under monopolistic competition we see that the behavior is very similar to monopoly, but free entry and free exit makes the long run equilibrium of a monopolistically competitive firm quite different than monopoly. Monopoly earns profit even in the long run, but a firm under monopolistically competitive markets earn zero economic profit because of this free entry and exit. So, if profit is there in the short run, the new firms enter and taking some demand away from the existing firm price and profit falls. If there is loss in the short run then some firms will leave the market the remaining firms will enjoy higher demand and prices. So, that is why in the long run it will be zero economic profit in case of monopolistically competitive market while in monopoly it is always positive. <coughs> <clears throat> and look at this monopolistically competitive form in the long run. What is happening interestingly here the ATC is actually touching the demand curve. So, that demand curve is tangential to the average total cost curve and that is why what is happening price is equals to ATC. So, in the short run there is a difference between P and ATC which was making economic positive economic profit, but free entry makes new firm to enter and price is equals to ATC. Now, one interesting point here look at the tangency is actually happening towards the left side of the ATC demand curve is not tangential at the minimum point of ATC. Now, my first question is it possible that demand curve to be tangential at ATC's minimum point? Think about it. Can the demand curve be tangential at the minimum of the average total cost curve? Is it possible or not? Even if you do not think about much of economics, your simple geometry can help you. See, ATC curve is an U shaped curve and demand curve is downward sloping. So, a downward sloping demand curve cannot become tangential to an U shaped curve that is coming from purely geometry. Whatever way you can try, you can never make that downward sloping demand curve tangential to 
a curve which is actually u shape. That is the reason this demand curve is tangential at ATC is a, at a point which is left side of its minimum point. How to make this demand curve tangential to ATC's minimum point? If you rotate this curve and make it flat, then only there is a possibility. And when the demand curve becomes flat, that means you are turning towards competition, perfectly competitive market. Okay? So, that is why while the long run equilibrium of a monopoly market, monopolistically competitive market is P equals to ATC, in case of competition we got P equals to LAC equals to LMC. So, everything was happening, everything got equalized at the long run equilibrium point, but here it is not the case. So, that means, even though price and average total cost are equal, there is a difference between price and marginal cost. And the difference between price and marginal cost is known as markup in economics literature. So, this is known as markup. Look at this. Difference between ATC and MC, that means difference between P and MC is the markup. So, in the long run, even though economic profit is zero, the monopolistically competitive firm is making some kind of markup. Markup pricing means price which is higher than marginal cost, which was not the case in case of competition. Because we mentioned that marginal cost pricing is actually the case in competition and that is why competitive firm does not have any market power. If you recall, we said that when your price is different than marginal cost, when price is higher than marginal cost, that is actually the source of your market power and that is why we said that market power is measured by P minus MC over P. Okay? P minus MC over P, that is the way we measure market power, here you have a market power. Okay. Now, the question is <coughs> why monopolistically competitive firm is actually less efficient? Obviously, you can easily understand that any firm with market power will charge higher price and produce lower amount of output. Right? And that is the simple reason we can understand. We have explained this in the context of a monopoly market also. We showed that in monopoly, your price is higher than competitive price, output is lower than competitive output. As a result of which, monopolists generate dead weight loss. Same logic is applicable here, because this is also a case where firms are having market power. And they have excess capacity. Now, what is the excess capacity? I will go back to the previous diagram to explain this. Look at this is the minimum point of ATC and this is the equilibrium. Now, if you recall, we also said in the context of cost of production that minimum point of long run average cost curve is known as minimum efficient scale size. So, cost would be minimum if you produce there, but here what is happening? equilibrium point lies to the left side of that point. So, the difference between minimum efficient scale size and the equilibrium point of a monopolistically competitive firm is known as excess capacity. That means, the firm has the capacity to produce more, but the firm is not doing it. Why? firm is maintaining some amount of extra capacity with them, so that that excess capacity they can use to stop some amount of potential threat for the new entrants. The moment some new firm makes an attempt to enter, 
the existing firm can use this excess capacity to produce more so that price will fall and when the price falls the new firm may not be able to cope up with the cost structure that that price may not be attractive for the new firms so that is why this excess capacity is known as strategic entry barrier which the monopolistically competitive firm can use to stop some kind of potential threats from the new entrants so two things you have to keep in mind what is excess capacity then the difference between minimum efficient scale size the output corresponding to minimum efficient scale size and the equilibrium level of output of a monopolistically competitive firm. So, that is what the monopolistically competitive firm operates on the downward sloping portion of the ATC curve. So, left side of the minimum point and produces less than the cost minimizing output and this difference is known as excess capacity. And under perfect competition what we saw that firm produces exactly the minimum point of the ATC is in the long run there is no excess capacity. Then markup that means in the perfectly competitive market as I said the equilibrium long run equilibrium is P equals to LAC equals to MC even in the short run also P equals to MC. But here P is greater than MC as a result of which they are maintaining some kind of markup. Okay. So, these two excess capacity and markup can explain why monopolistic competition is less efficient than perfect competition, very easy to understand. And monopolistically competitive market and its welfare of course, again you can understand we have proved that markets but maximizes social welfare and what is that market? Competitive market. Since competitive market does not produce any sort of deadweight loss, we proved earlier that social welfare is maximum only when the market is perfectly competitive, when the firm has no market power any type of imperfectly competitive market wherein the firms have some market power social welfare is not maximum ok. So, because P, equal, P is greater than MC in monopolistically competitive market quantity is below the socially efficient quantity ok. But it is not easy for the policy maker to fix this problem ok. Why? Because firms can earn zero profit, so cannot actually require them to produce uh, to reduce prices. Okay. So, when they are earning zero profit, then you cannot impose some regulation so that they will uh, reduce the price, that is not possible. If they reduce further, then they will be earning negative economic profit, they have to leave the market. Okay. So, number of firms in the market may not be optimal. Why? Because due to external effects from entry of new firm, new firm can enter when there is a positive, uh, that means there is a product, uh, uh, there are two types of externalities that we get in a monopolistically competitive market. First one is called product variety externality. What is this? See product variety externality means in monopolistically competitive market for the same product you get lot of varieties and as a consumer we always prefer to have varieties even though we would like to buy the same product in absence of variety but still we prefer. Okay. So, that is <coughs> that probably the reason Many a times we go to the supermarket to enjoy lot of varieties instead of buying the same product from the nearby groceries. So, consumer surplus actually increases when there is a lot of variety, this is called 
product variety externality is a good thing in monopolistically competitive market. But then there is business stealing externality. Okay? What is the business stealing externality? Business stealing externality is when the existing firms incur losses because the new entrants in the market. So, the inefficiencies of monopolistically monopolistic competition are subtle and very hard to measure and no easy way for policymakers to improve because policymakers cannot impose regulation to reduce the price further because they are already earning zero economic profit. Okay. So, inefficiency which was very easy to measure in the context of monopoly, it was very easy to uh, regulate also with antitrust laws, it is difficult in case of monopolistic competition. And here is the case then advertising which I have introduced earlier, since the products are similar but not identical, advertising becomes a strategy of the firms to differentiate their products. Okay? So, perfect competition, monopoly and monopolistically competition and in each of these cases, which firm would advertise perfect competition to not possible, monopoly not required, but monopolistically competitive market, yes, advertisement is required. And second, the question is, is advertising good or bad for the societies? So, what are the pros and cons of advertising? So, advertising in monopolistically competitive industries, product differentiation and markup pricing leads to advertising. Okay? Each, each seller is trying to differentiate the product from others. In general, the more differentiated the products, the more advertising uh, uh, the firms uh, will buy. Okay? And then economists disagree about the social value of uh, advertising. Advertising may not be good for the society. Why this is so? See, these are critics of advertisement. See, what the critics they believe that society is actually wasting the resources it devotes to advertising. See, why is it happening? The moment you advertise, you need to spend extra money for that. And the moment you spend more and more ad on advertising, then your cost of production will go up. And when cost of production goes up, obviously what you will do? You will try to bypass some amount of the cost to the consumer as well. Very simple. Okay. So, this advertisement is a very costly activity. You see, these sometimes these firms they hire very uh, so many celebrities, either uh, film actors or actresses or football players or cricket players, so on and so forth. So, they demand huge money to come for an advertisement for your product. Your cost of production will go up and how will you get your money back by pushing some of your cost to the consumers. So, that is the biggest criticism uh, against uh, uh, the consumer, against the competition and sometimes the firm advertise to manipulate people's taste. Even if I do not like that product, by seeing that a actor or actresses they are coming and advertising, I get a temptation to buy. So, indirectly that means the firms are trying to manipulate people's taste and preference. Okay? And advertising impedes competition, it creates some kind of uh, perception that products are more differentiated than others. Okay? And that is how you create some kind of monopoly power. So, advertising basically creates some monopoly power. Even though in true sense there is no difference between the product, by advertising the firms are indirectly 
claiming that the products are actually different and we believe that because the advertisement are done by many celebrities, many of whom are liked by us. Okay. So, advertisement impedes then competition. Then in defense of advertising, some people they say that no advertising is not always bad, it sometimes do good also. First of all, it provides useful information. If there is no advertisement, probably customers would not know that there is such kind of product and what are the benefits of that product compared to others. Some useful information is there. If the true information is given in the advertisement, many a times they do not then we will get to know that yes, such kind of product exists in the market and this is the way by which this product is different than the others. Okay. And informed buyers can easily find and exploit the price difference. So, if there is advertisement, before going to the market itself, I would know that this product has these, these, these things and this is the way this product is different than others. So, if the price what they are charging is worthy, so I will go and easily find that product of my choice. Otherwise, without advertisement, I have to really go and search for a good products among that many items which are available. It will cost lot of my time. So, that advertisement promotes competition and reduces market power also okay in that sense some kind of competition because you have to be competitive in the market when others are advertising and making their product superior that information is there now if you are not a superior product you have to compete with this products because now the customers are informed customers with so much of knowledge about the products, their varieties. So, this is the result of a uh, sunglass or eyeglass were more expensive in states that uh, prohibited advertisement by eyeglass makers than in states that did not restrict such advertisement. Those type of examples are also there. And sometimes advertising acts as a signal of quality, right? A firm's willingness to spend more, that means how can I spend more? Because when I believe that my product is of good quality, okay, a firm's willingness to spend uh, huge amounts of advertising may signal the uh, ability, quality of its product to the consumer, regardless of the uh, content of ads, right? All right. I believe that if I spend so much also I can make profit because my product itself is very good. And ads may convince buyers to buy a product once, but the product must be of high quality for people to become repetitive buyers. This is very important. You can manipulate my taste once. I will buy. Okay, I will buy by seeing the advertisement. I will believe that and I will buy. But if the quality is not good, second time I won't come back. So, if you want to make me a repeat buyer, then of course you have to maintain the quality. So, that means advertising can give a signal about the quality also. The most expensive ads are not worthwhile unless they lead to repeat buyers. Okay. If my buyers are not coming back again for my product, I cannot really go for such kind of expensive advertisement. So, in the consumer see expensive ads, they think the product must be of good quality if the company is willing to spend that much on advertising. Brand name, sometimes advertisement creates brand name. So, in many markets, brand name products coexist with generic ones, right? So, firms with brand name used to spend uh, more on advertisement, change 
uh, high, uh, charge a higher price for their products, right? As with advertisement, there is disagreement about the economics of uh, brand names. Some people they say brand name is good, some people say that brand name is bad, okay. So, there are argument against and in favor of uh, brand names. So, critics of brand names they believe that brand name causes consumers to perceive differences that do not actually exist, okay. For example, this apple is a brand. Some people may believe that Apple has a brand name and Apple is better than Samsung even though in reality not much of a difference. When you buy a shirt from Louis Philippe or Van Ocean, Peter England, you believe that these shirts are much better than the ordinary shirts which are available in market. But in reality many a times the difference may not exist, okay. Many times the sellers two different brands are buying their shirts from the same uh, manufacturer, same tailors and then putting a tag, right. So, brand name causes some perceived differences even though in reality such kind of differences may not exist. Consumers willing to pay more for brand name is irrational and fostered by advertising. So, I am ready to pay much more for a Vanusian shirt than the ordinary one and it comes through the brand name is created by that advertisement. So, I am actually get more satisfaction for that brand itself. Somebody they want to buy Adidas and if the Adidas name the tag is not visible then they do not buy it. Why? because they want to show that I am wearing this particular brand that gives extra satisfaction, okay. So, eliminating government protection of trade makers would reduce influence of brand names and result in lower prices. Then there are defenders of brand names what they say that brand names provide some kind of information about quality to consumer like advertisement. Companies with brand names have incentive to maintain the quality. Adidas, it has earned his name. Now, Adidas has an incentive also to maintain that quality. Otherwise, if people lose their faith once from Adidas, so it would be disaster for them. They may not come back again for uh, Adidas uh, products. So, then in conclusion what we can say that differentiated products are everywhere that is why monopolistic competition are more prevalent type of market structure than the perfect competition. All the products whatever you see drinking water, bottle of uh, drinking water, novels, nightclubs, cereals, shampoos, then soaps, toothpaste, all are differentiated product. Not much of a difference in true sense, but they are differentiated with advertisements so on and so forth. So, that is why monopolistically competitive market. The theory of monopolistically competition describes many markets in the economy, but yet offer little guidance for the policy maker looking to improve the market allocation, okay. So, there are many monopolistically competitive market which are as we have proved that these are less efficient than competition because firms are having market power, output is less, price is more compared to competition, but policy makers cannot control this type of market. Why? Because the firms are already earning zero economic profit in the long run. So, further regulation to push the price down means the firms will earn negative profit, okay. Profit will go down that means they will incur loss difficult to control. 
So, even though these markets are prevalent, it is of little guidance to the policy maker to improve the resource allocation. So, what we have discussed then in this chapter? A monopolistically competitive market has many forms, not as many as competition, differentiated products and free entry. But please remember, not as free as competition because little more investment is required to produce toothpaste than agricultural products. Each firm in a monopolistically competitive market has excess capacity. How it is defined? The difference between the output associated with the minimum point of ATC and the equilibrium. Okay? Equilibrium point happens at the left side of the minimum point of ATC. Okay? So, even though the minimum efficient scale size minimizes the total cost, the firm strategically behave to produce less and charge more because they want to maintain that as a strategic entry barrier, that excess capacity acts as a strategic entry barrier. right? And then monopolistic competition does not have all the desirable welfare properties or perfect competition which we have already proved. There is a dead weight loss caused by the markup. Okay? Markup means your price is higher than marginal cost. Okay? And that is the source of the dead weight loss can be too large or too small depending on the number of varieties that exist in the market. And there is no clear way for policymakers to improve the market outcome. All right. And product differentiation and markup pricing lead to the use of advertisement and brand names. Since product are different and markup pricing what they are doing, they are spending more for advertisement and we discussed arguments in favor and support of advertisement and brand names. Some people say that advertisement is bad, some people say that it is good. Mostly those who are critics, they say that advertisement means it is a wastage of resources, cost of production unnecessarily goes up and consumer need to pay more when the lot of money is spent for advertisement. But at the same time, advertisement gives lot of information to the consumers. Consumers become an informed buyers. They need to sell, they need to spend less time to buy this. And defenders, that is why they say that use of inform the consumers and compete more vigorously in the price and quantity. So, with this, we are closing our discussion on monopolistically competitive market, that means large number of small forms. In our next class, we will talk about, we will discuss about another form of market structure wherein we have small number of large firms which is known as oligopoly market which is also another example of markets with imperfect competition that means imperfectly competitive market. Thank you.